Welcome to Way to the Win, a special show with a weekend coming up. It's the sales that are going on at the moment. And we've also got David Thistleton, who's uh, joined us on the line. David, welcome. It's good to have the three-time winning award journalist with us uh, from KwaZulu Natal. Much appreciated. I know you've told me you've watched the show a few times, and it's good to have you as a guest. Thank you, Claude. Yes, I watch the show every Saturday morning, and I think the three of you together are, are three of the best analysts in the country. So it's always worth listening to you all. <laughs> Uh, very, very kind of you. There's a nice compliment, Darren and Daryl, from, from the, the, the best writer in the country. How's that? Absolutely. It uh, gives me a little bit of a spring in my step to hear such kind words. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Uh, right, Darren, you, Cape Town's your centre. I know that's uh, because not only because you, you reside there, but you also stay in the form there too, as, as you do every day. So can we look to something, look forward to something exciting? I'm really looking forward to the card at Cape Town. I think there's a couple of standouts on the card and I think we will have a profitable day's racing and lovely to have David on the show. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks, Dan. Pleasure. Excellent. Thanks very much. Okay, so let's um, get into our show then and, and go through it, everything uh, for you. Um, we'll take you through the our competition where you stand a great chance of winning again. Uh, Dine with the Stars on Thursday evening coming. I hope you're going to be with us. And the only way you can be with us if you've joined our WhatsApp group, uh, which will give you more information. We're hosting a live show on Thursday night and, uh, and uh, we'll have some great celebrities that will be with us there too. In addition to the racing, you know, your racing um, fraternity, as we know the guys, uh, Betway are very close to a lot of the uh, uh, ambassadors because they bet on so many different types of sports. And we're looking forward to the World Sports Betting uh, presenting this year's uh, Gauteng Summer Cup. And uh, we're going to be talking about that on Thursday night. Remember to use the Waiter to Win referral code when you register in order to qualify. There's a look at who will be with us, certainly on Thursday evening, our champion jockey, Samanga Kamala, our champion trainer, Mark Takak. And uh, there's quite a lot else going on as far as that is concerned. So there's no doubt uh, there's something to look forward to um, as far as Thursday night. There's the number 0691643272. Please send your name to that number and you, they will add you to the group. And the idea here is that as they see you more active and you, you've registered your account and you're betting on the account, you have more chances of you getting in to be part of all of the fantastic prizes and tips and competitions and the mega wins that will come your way. So we're in Cape Town. I'll start straight away with Darren about this 13 to 10 shot. What a cherry from the Adam Marcus stable. Part. You are part of that stable, Darren. Maybe you can tell us so we can have a bit of a go there. Um, I believe that she's pretty much a five-star bet. Um, she ran a very good third on debut. If you watch the replay, she came from a long way back. She lengthened her stride. She's got a lovely big action. And she was quickening, quickening up smartly late. Um, there's a couple of uh, collateral form lines here with What a Cherry and Rose of Mine and another one, Bal Rouge. But uh, I believe What a Cherry is going to improve at least four lengths from her debut performance. And um, the second favorite in the race, Antique Code Amor, ran three lengths behind Sunlit Path. Now, I'm sure Adam uh, would have a line of form there because he trains Sunlit Path. And I'm sh also sure that What a Cherry is. Uh, has a lot of lot more class than a horse like Sunlit Path. So on that alone, I think what a cherry is probably going to start odds on, and I do believe she'll win. Uh, Daryl, you have the same view on it? I'd, I'd love to be in the same camp as uh, Darren and give our viewers some confidence, but unfortunately I'm not. Uh, I just believe uh, that the, the strength of the form that she debuted in isn't holding up. There's been three runners and all three have run unplaced. But in saying that she was, she, she's only had one start today and she's got a lot of scope for improvement. But my biggest concern is the stable jockey to Brent Crawford, Liam Totwa, uh, has opted to ride the first timer, give me a ru ruby, over a horse like Rose of Mine, who just finished alongside What a Cherry. So if give me a ruby has got any sort of ability, and if the money does come to her, I've got healthy respect for her. And also number three, Apollo Moon. Two fair starts to date. If you actually look at her debut efforts, the first, second, fourth, and fifth have all come out to win. So if she repeats that debut effort, she certainly comes into 
arrays like this with, with strong claims, along with the fact that she's been fitted with blinkers for the first time. So I'm playing a little bit wider, but I certainly wouldn't be shocked to see the favorite win. But I have gone a few in the first leg of the pick six. Okay, so you're seeing it differently to Darren as far as the first leg. Well, let's go to the second leg, which the future is bright. Uh, Daryl is a two to one favorite. Um, Grant for Nickak riding here for the Justin Slade stable. Second favorite marginally, uh, Meros Jamala at 22 to 10. Um, would you, uh, would, you would, would the betting be the right indicator here for the uh, opening leg of the pots? I believe so, Clark. Just my biggest concern over here is the lack of pace in the race. You do have a horse like Itzida, who has gone to the front in the past, but I certainly don't see him making it a breakneck pace up front. So a horse like the future is bright, who's had bad draws in the past, jumps from plum, plum draw number one. And if he can go a little bit handier, he's, he's going to be the horse to beat. Because since I've stepped him over ground, he's improving with each and every run. And last night, he came from a long way behind horses like Super Duke and Vida Futura. So although he's worse off at the weights, I'm, I'm expecting him to confirm that form. And that his biggest danger may well prove to be Jai Marla. Now, last night, he met a young up-and-coming three-year-old in Senso Unico. He had to give him, I think, uh, five kilograms. And that was, that was his undoing. And come tomorrow, he meets another up-and-coming three-year-old in the future is bright. With the same weight terms, he has to give away five kilograms, which isn't going to be a, the easiest of tasks for him. But I do believe those two are going to fight tonight, and I mm. think that's enough to get through to the next leg of the pick six. Is that enough, Darren, or do we need anything, anything else? Well, my value bet on the card is to buy lights. Um, I think he'll take a lot of beating uh, tomorrow. Um, you know, his ratings tumbled down to uh, an 80. He's dropped uh, 11 points in his last six starts. Uh, you can put a line through his last run. He returned coughing, and I'm sure they've treated him for that now. Um, on his best of form, I mean, a horse like Royal Watch beat him a length and three quarters in a 96 handicap. Uh, he was running on strong knee. This is his best trip of 2,000 meters. The blinkers go on, and, I mean, he's run off Hiltzbrates, Comedy Ding, a couple of lengths off Rascalian. He has got a touch of class about him, and in a 79 handicap, I think Dubai Lights could be the horse to beat uh, over horses like Jamala. Very good second behind an up and coming, uh, decent sort Senso Unico in his last start. And then the future is bright, who holds Super Duke and Viva Futura on his last start. He could be progressive and must go into all bets. Okay. Well, Dubai Lights, that price is not going to last 12 to 1. Um, if you like that that much. Race five, uh, let's go straight to that. It's a 2000 where um, uh, Justin Snape is dominating the market again in this race with Kariba Hall and, and Royal Watch, Darren. Um, will they win it? Um, the they are the, the horses or? to beat. Yeah. Um, Royal Watch, he does go the 2000 meter trip for the first time. And on pedigree, he'll see it out. He's a lovely horse. He's had the one run back. In his penultimate start, he actually beat Dubai Lights by length and three quarters. Um, he would have tightened up nicely from his last run and with a handy galloping weight and a one draw uh, is the horse to beat. Um, it, legitimate. Now, he's got all the ability in the world and he doesn't put it in. Um, I remember the one day when in the politician stakes, he ran second behind Comedy Dung. He beat Rascalian that day. Uh, he moved up like he was going to go on by to win the race. And then he pricked his ears and just tried to get out of it. So he's a very difficult horse, not one to trust or not one to have a punt on, but you can't ignore him as if he does put it in, he, he can win a race of this nature. Uh, Kariba Hall also going the trip. Uh, he hasn't been the trip in quite some time. Um, his best form was over 1800 and a mile. If he sees it out, he's got to go into the play. Uh, those are my first three selections in race five, the top mm -hmm. three in the betting. That seems fairly straightforward. Is that right, Daryl? But I'm not looking past Royal Watch. I watched his replay last time out. I was super impressed. Richard just opt opted to give him a chance and he stayed on really powerfully the whole way up the straight. And you know that the front horse over there, Fire, uh, Fire Alley, I think, he got it all his own way up front, easy fractions. And for Royal Watch to make up the ground he did in the straight, it was really impressive. He's a half-brother to Royal Badge, who won a mile and a half. Now, I believe he's going to be even more effective over 
this sort of ground and a little bit further. And if that's the case, in my mind, he's underrated. Um, you know, he finished so powerfully, he put five lengths be between himself and the fourth place horse. So he's going to strip much fitter. It's a bank lane or bets for me on my side. Number six, Royal Watch. Okay, well, that's interesting. That's another price that's not going to last too long. The sixth race on the card is where Cosmic Highway, Dean Kenema dominated 18 to 10. Um, good traveler. And you, you can see the good horses now are starting to come through. Um, good traveler, the second choice of three to one. Xavier in the 33 to 10 is the third choice. But let's stay with you, Daryl. Um, what do you make of, of Cosmic Highway? Can we get away with Cosmic Highway or do you respect Good Traveller? Clark, I respect Good Traveller. I think last time out, uh, it's reported that he was restless. So he could have been way above himself in his comeback effort. And you know, he's a great one, one over mile. He certainly has got a lot of ability and I'm hoping he can bounce back because I'd love to see him train on. So yes, I've <coughs> thrown him into the pick six. But you know, the favorite Cosmic Highway certainly runs as if he's going to enjoy the step up in trip. Uh, excellent effort last time I'd seen the match him where he, when he was the only three-year-old taking on the older boys. We saw Majestic Mozart win very impressively from that form line when he came up to the half halt for the Andrew and Ashley Fortune Yard. Um, and like I say, he could be anything now that he's going the extended trip. And you can't discount the chances of number three, Zavion, a super impressive debut. Certainly not disgraced in the soccer ball or the Cape Classic. And you know, it's a small field. So although he's going to be given a chance early on, he won't be too far back turning for home. And he'll be doing his best work late. So if the other two fluff his lines, I see him picking up the pieces. I played the safe route of here. I've gone one, two, and three in the pick six card. Okay, Darren, did you do the same or are you going Cosmic I've Harvard? Gone, I've gone the exact same route. I've gone one, two, and three. Um, I do believe that the two and three are the horses to beat. Uh, Cosmic Highway tries the mile for the first time. He's bred for the mile and even further. So I do think he's going to relish it. He is a three-time winner. Zavian's only a one-time winner and they're at level weights. Um, I think Cosmic Highway could take all the beating in race six. Uh, Zavian was really impressive on debut. Uh, it's like they threw him into the race at the 200-meter mark. He quickened up smartly, won going away. And last time out in the Cape Classic, he made up uh, a lot of ground late on in the race to only get beat three parts of a length by Trip of Fortune. So that was a solid effort. He's also going to enjoy the mile on pedigree. And uh, I'm making my second choice. I've thrown in Good Traveller. Uh, I would say he was a little bit disappointing on his comeback run. But um, yeah, he'll be more suited to this sort of trip and must go into exotics. All right, Cosmic Highway, first choices then. But the seventh race on the card, let's have a look at that five to two, the field, yeah? And it does seem to be a bit more competitive, this race, Darren. Well, Captain Fontaine, he's a smart horse. Um, you know, he's got a huge reputation. He comes into the merchants with 54 kilos on his back. And I think he's well ahead of the handicapper. Uh, just the, the manner in which he's won, you know, after almost a, um, a year rest, he came back and won a sprint at Scottsville. Um, his cruising speed is pretty much a good horse's top speed. And then he still quickens into another gear, uh, which mm. makes him really a really smart horse. So I think with 54 kilos in the merchants, I think Captain Fontaine's going to take a power beating. And I'm not sure we're going to get five to two about this horse again after tomorrow. Um, horses like Amber X, he's rested. He's a three-year-old. He only receives two kilos from a four-year-old uh, like Captain Fontaine. And um, I think he's, he's going to find it a little bit tougher here. Um, I've thrown a couple into the pick six, just in case. Uh, you know, Captain Fontaine, uh, they are trying to get him ready for the Queen's Plate. And uh, he won't be fully wound up, but I think his class will carry him through. So was this, a, just give me the history on this horse. Was this, a, I see David Ferraris is in this horse and there's a change of stable now uh, going to the puller yard from the Eric Sands yard. Is, is that right with Captain Fontaine? What's happened there? No, he's always been with uh, Garth Puller uh, in Durban. He, then he went into quarantine. He was going to Hong Kong and then that fell through. He came back into training. Why, after just just to help me understand, sorry, why does the computer form indicate says ex Eric Sands, 5 November 2021? Uh, he's, he's uh, I think he's in Cape Town with the Eric Sands stable, but still under Garth Puller. So that must be a misprint. 
but Eric Sand Sands is looking after him. Uh, I think he was supposed to actually go overseas again, but uh, must have fallen through the flight or something. I know he came out of quarantine and then he had a run, but then he was reported to be going overseas again. So, so he's also he's always fallen. been he's always been with the Puller Yard, right? Okay, so that ex Eric Sands whole story, maybe Eric's looking after him now. We need to get a bit of information on that, but that's that computer form information, unfortunately, is not correct uh, as far as that goes. But it does sound, uh, David, have you seen this horse run? Yes, yeah, so I agree with uh, Darren. He's very impressive. And Ambiorix is a, is he any sort of danger, Ambiorix, or, or is it all Captain Fontaine in your opinion? Well, uh, Ambiorix MB also um, won, won that uh, grade one very well. So, um, and Captain Fontaine's having his first run down the Cape, but uh, mm. God okay, Puller so rated. God Puller always said Captain Fontaine, he reckoned, was the best ski rod in the country last season. Okay. So I think that's how well he regarded it. I highly rated there from Garth Puller. Thanks, David. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry to have dragged you in. I know we were going to talk, Durban, and that, that was the preparation, but you do know all the horses around the country. Um, Darren, are we finished in terms of your preview? In terms of oh, Captain Fontaine, is there anything else you want to add before I bring Daryl to, to summarize? Well, another horse I just wanted to, to add was Captain Tatters. You know, he's taken on the best in the country. Um, he never runs far back. He's run two lengths off in the diadem, uh, under a length off in the Golden Horse Sprint. And... Um, I think he's he's definitely going to be in the first four, and I have included him into the pick six. But a strong selection, Captain Fontaine. I think five to two is very generous. Yeah, I, I looked at the market; it does indicate that. Uh, it, you know, one would have thought it'd be if the market's anything to go by com competitive, but clearly not the case. Daryl, are you also in Captain Fontaine's corner? Ah, uh, do you know that uh, Garth Pool has been around? in this game longer than I've been alive. And uh, he's adamant this is of international quality. Uh, he can't wait for the source to get abroad and uh, show what he's capable of. So healthy, healthy respect for him. And uh, being up the straight again, you know, he can just uh, slot him behind the, the, the pace and he's got such a devastating turn of foot. So yes, he's one of the leading lights, but you can't discount Ambiorix over here, you can't fault his form. And you know that last year this race was won by a three-year-old in Eric the Red. And on that occasion, he was only in receipts of three and a half kilograms from Rio Carrari. <laughs> you know, I don't see anything this year carrying in the region of 56 anywhere near Rio Carrari's ability. So Ambiorix could be slung in over here. Richard's going to get down to 52 and a half. And uh, I think he certainly would have benefited from the break. He would have strength, strengthened up. And if he's anywhere near his best, he's going to give Captain Fontaine a big run for his money. Um, I'm more than happy only putting the two. that They'll surpass in getting me through to the next leg. Okay, so you are going to include Mbiorix in your play. Eight race on the card, uh, Gerald. Then Black Silver at 22 to 10 favourite here. Again, the Snaith Yard dominating at the back end here with a sort of song as well. Um, who's priced up at 28 to 10. Will the Justin State Yard win it, Daryl? Uh, Clyde, you know, just looking at my pick six, it's relatively tight. It's a cheap perm. It's a Phillies and Mares handicap. I've opted to go field. So okay. personally, if I'm surviving, going into the last leg, I will be looking for a result. You want a result, okay. <laughs> yeah, but um, if I had to narrow it down, I'd only go one and two in a very tight perm. Number two, what's in a dream? Have a look at her rating. She's come down from a 72 to uh, from a 77 to a 72. And I certainly believe she could benefit from being stepped up in trip to 10 furlongs. Mm -hmm. And then the top weight is the class package in the race. But if I'm in the pick six going into the last, I'll be funking for the biggest roughly in the field. Okay. Well, and, and Darren, now's, what's your take right at the back? I'm going banker black silver. Um, Actually, I was you guys are on two different pages today. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I'm going Banker Black Silver. You know, they did test her out of uh, by, over the 2000 meter trip or 1950 last time out. And if you see where she came from that day, French, gen, uh, French generation or French um, declaration got away that day. There was a strong tailwind and they were all winning from the front. 
and uh, that fully got uh, went about six lengths clear top of the straight and Black Silver had to try and make up the ground and she was flying at the finish uh, a stride after the post she was half a length ahead so she really stays well and in this sort of field with a merit rating down uh, seven points from a, from four starts back I think Black Silver is a banker in all bets. Okay, 22 to 10, solid choice. Let's look, Darren, there's your page. Um, you've put Black Silver in, I see, as the insure bet on, on, on Betway at 22 to 10. And uh, you're going, what, what a cherry is your best? Yes, what a cherry is my, my best bet on the card. Um, and I spoke to Adam, she's doing really well at home, and they are expecting a big run. Uh, value bet to buy lights, I think he's the wrong price. He should be around four to one, five to one in the betting. And then my Sherbet Black Silver, um, she'll be staying on strongly at the finish, and in Sherbet looks pretty solid. Uh, my kennel with treble for the day is Water Cherry in race three, Captain Fontaine in race seven, and Black Silver in race eight at around 25 to one, which will shorten closer to race time. My pick six is 756 Rand. Um, it was a small perm, so I've opted to put six horses in the merchants just in case. And I'm bankering Black Silver and Water Cherry. Okay, well, that's a good page, 25 to 1. Daryl, um, your page for Kenilworth uh, Saturday looks a bit skinnier, so let's go through that. Yeah, that's my pick six, Clyde, 432 Rand for a full perm. Um, if you want to go shorter in the last leg, just go the one in the two, and that will be a 96 Rand perm. My best bet, roll watch. If you've got some time on your hands, uh, log on to teletrack.com, go watch his latest replay, and hopefully you're as impressed as what I am. Oh, Cape Town sounds like a place to be. Well, let's find out. The professional double of the day, race three, what a cherry into race five, Royal Watch. That's Darren's best bet into Daryl's best bet, and that's an eight to one double out at Kenilworth on Saturday. You're reminded about our auction. Thanks to David Thistleton for writing up an article nice and well with regards to the um, MGAS Bloodstock Accelerated Auctioneers uh, livestock sale in uh, South Africa. It's an online sale, but uh, we'll happen to be Mauritians at the time and we'll be taking the Mauritians through in the parade ring what they'll be bidding on. So anybody, owners, trainers interested in participating in the sale, putting their horses on, here's your opportunity. The entries close on the 24th of November uh, where Mauritius will be quite keen on buying some South African horses. That will be fantastic. David Thistleton, our three-time award-winning journalist, uh, joins us. Uh, we're going to preview now the Sunday Hollywood Bets Gravel Race meeting and start up straight. Uh, it's an eight-race uh, race program. We are recording this relatively early on Friday morning, um, Dave, so as you well know. So we haven't got any car changes and fluctuated betting, etc. So our viewers can naturally take note of that um, as they go. But the opening leg of the pick six, you wonder if this or Super Silver is not hard to beat, David? No, no, he comes out very strongly on form lines. And um, he was staying on strongly last time over 1800. My, my only concern with him is he, he wears blinkers and he took quite a keen hold in that race. So uh, stepping up to the 2300 and drawn five in a 9 field, if he gets caught without cover and is. Um, Racing a bit strongly, that could be a bit of a concern. So in, he, he's not the he's not the sort of horse I would um, go all out on. Okay. Um, so, so, so pick six to be play safe. Do we go wide? No, I was also going to include Grayling Gary, who last time that horse was caught wide and um, stayed on for a second. So he's proven to stay every inch of the strip. And I think Head Barden is looking for the strip. So I, I would include those two also for safety's sake. Three, five, so six. definitely Super is definitely the best horse in the race, but I'm just, I've just got a slight concern that with the blinkers over this trip, he might race a bit strongly. That's my only concern. Okay, so we'll cover up with with that. This horse, Chewbacca, this, I see 28 to 10. That's, a, that's got to be a generous price, Dave, about Chewbacca. Yeah, well, I think it's just uh, underlines uh, that it's quite a tough card. I think this is the first time I've ever had a best bet in a staying race. But um, last time he was actually uh, absolutely swinging on the bridle when he came into the straight from the back. And he was, um, he won by a neck, but he, he was almost five lengths clear of the third horse and almost eight lengths clear of the fourth horse. 
and they only gave him three points. So I think the handicapper was quite lenient on him. And he also really enjoyed the soft. So if, if there is a bit of rain on Sunday, um, that will play in his favor also. And, you know, he proved that he can be just be dropped out from that wide draw and run on very strongly. So, also so that's, Byron Foster and he said he's doing well here. Uh, excellent. So, that, so that's your best bet on the card, is it, Chewbacca? Yes, yeah. Best bet on the yeah. card. That's race four. Race yeah, five, yeah, Dave. Uh, that's okay. perfect. Uh, race five on the card. We'll have a look at the market with a bet three to one the field. And I, when I looked at it, I thought a bit of an open race. I mean, I personally liked that one uh, uh, Q for you and 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 the three horse uh, on the the two horse rather on the card. That's Sana. One and two from my end. How did you see it, Dave? Yeah, uh, when I spoke to Byron, he, he gave Q for you just a quartet chance. Um, but he is a front-running type, and he he's um, drawn one, so that, that will make him an interesting runner. Um, I, I felt Bassett saw her last time. The pace was a bit slow for her, but but she still stayed on well, and with a quicker pace, I'll, I'll make her the one to beat. And I also like Rise, and Rise will be staying on strongly also in this race. So. Personally, I'm only going to put two and five in my pick six. Okay. So I'm, I, I just hope they get a strong pace because that's what they'll need. You know, the pace is a concern. So two and five in the pick six for, for Dave in race number five, which leads us to the 1600, the sixth race on the card. Um, I just had to mention Isla Mirada also because um, she beat Bassett Sana the last time they met. But that race didn't really pan out for Bassett Sana and... Uh, is a reversal and draw fortunes now. So maybe Isla Mirada is one to consider, but um, also. And that'll be a big price. That's the 11 or in case the guys haven't got their cards in front of them. So 11, if you want to add it in, maybe a cover pick six or jackpot, as David indicates. Yeah, I thought in the sixth race, um, a handicap uh, um, at the 87 level, that perhaps, you know, your top of the board's Purple Panther. Um, Clinton Binder having having just won the last race uh, during the course of the week um, uh, for the Hollywood Syndicate. Um, I thought Purple Panther the right one. What, what did you think? Yes, definitely. Um, I followed the source last season and he, he always struck as one with um, plenty of ability, but um, he was quite weak last season and he's definitely strengthened up a lot now. So I think he's... Um, Still probably ahead of the handicapper, and he's got a, a fine turn of foot and drawn two, so you know Gravel's going to suit him. So I think yeah, he's he's the one to beat here. Yeah. Although there, there are quite a few out out in food. Um, Mr. Pig all always stays on very well, and in this smaller field, he's not going to have as much ground to make up as usual. Yeah, my one concern with Purple Panther is he's got a bit of a daisy cutting action, so I don't think he's going to enjoy. Um, well, actually, you know, he, he did actually. I'm, I'm wrong there because he, he won in the soft last time. So mm, mm. Yeah, I'm wrong. Okay. Anyway, are you, uh, are you, you sound like you're worried about the weather. Has it been raining in Durban there, Dave? Is there, are you under pressure with weather there? We've had quite a lot here in Joburg. I mean, it's been coming down with thunderstorms, as everybody knows, but what's it like Durban wise? No, the, the, the forecast is only for it to rain a bit on Sunday. It's, okay. It is actually, it's overcast at the moment. So oh, I'd also include um, Lucky Dancer won very well last time. Mm. Um, born to perform, they've changed from the pacifiers to the blinkers and he, he always plugs on very, very well. So got to include him. And uh, love the view. Is um, they tried to lead with him in his last two starts, but I think he's actually versatile, he can come from anywhere. So I think if they yeah. give him the chance from a wide draw, he can run on. Yeah, so no, there's the three horses there 2187 two, and 4. 2187 and 4. So you did, you mentioned Mr. Pagel, so that's got to go in the, in the seven horse as well. Okay, well, then the, the final leg of the jackpot, um, I, when I look again, just going through the card, this horse Maiden's Prayer, 
I don't know what you make. I wanted to ask your opinion about maiden's prayer. I thought 13 to 2 is good value. What's your take on this, Dave? And we'll bring well, Darren, Darren I in. I think on, on, on form lines, she's held by another lab um, through, through the horse star choice. Right. So, uh, and so I think, and I think another lab's got a, a touch of class about her and Anton Marcus has won on her before. So she's the one I've made to beat. Okay. But um, I'm also including um, intuitive ran on very well over 1200 meters last time and was drawn in pole and should stay the trip. So I'm including that one plus the two front runners, Lady Legend and Maria Carolina and Aisling ran, ran well in, in a listed race over a mile last time and we'll probably appreciate the step down the trip. So, I'm just so, so, so it's sounding like an open. Are you going quite a lot of horses here? This this particular event. Well, I'm just going five, one, two, three, and four. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. actually not leaving. My, I'm leaving my <laughs> spray out because I think. <laughs> okay. I think another love, another love. Hold it. On that form line. Okay, but Kim, do you mind if I add maiden spray in just in case? You know, I, mean? I, I picked <laughs> it up. So, you know, when you stick with the horse, you find something. Is you tend to, you know, the intuition plays some sort of. Yeah role in finding winners every now and then. Okay, so that does seem to be watch out that race, not easy. And then the final leg of the pick six, David, um, just to ask you, they are betting 11 to 2 the field, so uh, I, I, I thought that um, this horse, I don't know, at any price, I mean, they say, I see there's a turf switch now, this was chief executive number three, it's a, I don't even know what price it is, So, but I've put it into the play, and this was five for Stino, it's obviously joint favourite. Um, but is it is it that open? Yeah, the interesting thing about Chief Executive is that um, when Faustino made his debut, Chief Executive beat him by 14 lengths. But um, I think Chief Executive was just one of those precocious horses. He, right. he, he hasn't trained on too well, but he has come, come down to a competitive merit rating now. And he... He ran quite well last time, so I think he might be a fair outsider to consider. But Faustino is my value bet, and I'm going to bank him in this race. And last time, he showed good pace over 1,200 metres, and he looked the winner 50 metres out, and then he just um, faded in the last part. So I think um, Kamala aboard and the, over the, this trip, coming down to this trip, is going to suit him. And I don't think it's a very strong race. So, I'm, I'm gonna, so that it I'm might be worth taking. Um, it, are you going to go for the banker? So it might be worth taking the eleven to two about the horse Faustino then, Dave. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, so a each way bet, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well, that, I'm going to bring the guys in now because I'm going to bring up Daryl. I've, I've kept the guys out of your equation because that we can have a discussion now just quickly. Daryl, you've you found a best bet uh, in the fourth race on, on this page, yeah? Yeah, it's like um, David and I never discussed the card ahead of time and uh, his best bets and my bets, the same was Chewbacca. We saw the same thing coming into the straight last night. The jock just couldn't hold him. He was traveling so well. And the distance that he picked, put between himself and the third and the fourth horse, I think he's slung in with only a three pound penalty. I just hope he's written in a similar manner, given a little bit of cha a chance, because uh, you don't want to change your winning recipe or tactic. And judging on the fact that I think he's underrated, he, he certainly is the best bet on the card. But David and I disagree in the last. I like the look of Daddy. I think they finally figured out how to ride him. And you know, it's the last race on the card. I hope the jocks want to get home to watch Survivor or Carte Blanche. I hope they go as quick as they can. And uh, Sean just slots him in at the back of the field and you'll be staying on extremely well. Another one, I think, although it's a switch to the turf for him, I think um, he's got his confidence up now. And off a similar rating, I think he could go back to back. You're not worried about the draw? No, I actually think the draw is going to be in his favor because he likes to be given a chance early. Just as long as he settles in running, he'll be doing his best work late. And um, um, uh, maybe uh, Dave and I could race for a coat, but I think I'll run him down in the final 50. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting well, to watch. My, my concern with Daddy is that, um, I don't, has he ever raced on turf before? 
Yes, um, it's been quite some time ago. I think he's only had one start at the track and uh, he didn't manage to hit the board, but I think he's strengthened up since then. So it will be uh, only time will tell if he's a better turf or, or poly was. All right, well, well, let's bring Darren in. Darren, you found something else as, a, as your best bet on the card. Yes, you know, I watched that replay of Super Silver, and uh, he really quickened up well the last 200 meters with big strides. Um, like David touched on, he did over race early, but then he seemed to drop the bits and uh, travel uh, nicely uh, halfway through the race, and then he found a big finish. I'm hoping that go, don't go cruel and that he um, fights because uh, then we, we could be in a little bit of trouble. But if all goes uh, according to plan in this sort of field, he should take a lot of beating. Um, Head Gardner was very disappointing last time out, as well as Grayling Gari, who's had 27 starts in the Maidens. So I'll take my chances with Super Silver as my best bet in race three. Okay, then you've got another bet for us to play as well on the day. Yeah, I do believe that the PA uh, can pay a lot of money. I'm hoping to double and treble up along the way. I've started off with two bankers, um, race two running rifles, who looks hard to beat, and super silver. And then I've played a couple of horses each leg after that. Okay, there's the PA firm for the guys to snapshot. Um, the, the super professional double, if you want to call it, coming out of um, between David and Daryl and Darren is go super silver in the third into Chewbacca. And you should get nine to one if that all works out, which is quite a, well, that's, that's a great return if you get that right. Um, and then Dave, you've got two plays of the day for us on your slide. Yeah, yeah, Chewbacca and Faustino, yeah. So is my, well, I banker them both in the pick six, but um, Faustino or on the nose would be worth taking each way at that price. Excellent. Okay, so we've recorded that. I've just got a place accumulator. I'm looking to play it safe, and there's an eight rand permit you guys can dot down when you pause the screen. It's a small investment that we've looked at. And then just a reminder again uh, about Dining with the Stars this Thursday evening. Please join the WhatsApp group. We want you there. If you're watching, we want you at the dinner. We want you part of the live show. We'll be there, and uh, we are going to look forward to something really special with the celebrities in racing and other sports, et cetera, et cetera, that will do it. There's our number, 0869-164-3272. And that's uh, to join us every Friday. Uh, don't forget, uh, with the preview, we want to thank David Thistleton very much uh, for joining us. It was an interesting short, sweet, to the, to the point show. And I hope that we can uh, put up bragging rights on Monday morning, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Lyle. And I must just comment that it's, uh, it's really great to have you back in the commentary box. Thank you. Enjoy Thanks for being kind comment, of us. Your commentaries are legendary. Th Thanks, Dave. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, when I was actually, uh, my, I think one of my favorite times in racing was in the late 80s and early 90s when I was up in Joburg. Yes. Because I think you, you were just starting then with you. That's right. Nerve-wracking. It's nerve-wracking, you know, when you haven't done it for that long. I mean, uh, you know, you're in and out of the box, but it's different to when you're doing it seven days a week. You know, it's fine. It's like water off a duck's yeah. back, but to, to come back after a few years and try again, it's, it's, it's not so easy. But uh, we're building our confidence and we're getting back there and we want to make it all exciting again and great again. Yeah. So I look forward yeah. to it. So thank you very much for that. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Good memories, good, good horses that you raced with many, many years. You've been part of it for, for a long time too. So, yeah, we, uh, I know Full Racing made an announcement about stakes, etc., And they also made an announcement about race meetings. So there's quite a bit of activity that's going on at uh, the moment. We've lost uh, Darren. Uh, I want to thank him for his time. And Daryl, enjoy the weekend uh, on um, No More Lightning. Hopefully it stays away. Fortunately, there's no race yeah, in Joburg, so we're okay. Thanks, Clyde. And thanks to Dave. Uh, he's blowing smoke over here, so I think we need to get him back on, Clyde. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, Dave. Well, he's a he's a great journalist. So what the heck? Yeah, it's great to have you, Mike. Absolutely, you so and a, even a better person. He's a great journalist, and he's a better person. Yeah, it was a pleasure yeah. having him. He's a gentleman. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, 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 guys. All the best for the weekend. I hope it all works out. Hey, cheers. Cheers, guys. Bye.